Hi, my name is Alice with Apex Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about how to use priorities in Jira as a Scrum Master. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that I cover in this video, let me know in this comment section below. Let's jump into Jira and let's take a look at priorities. Right, so you might have looked at priorities and maybe not known what to do with them. We're specifically going to be covering priorities from the backlog view of a Jira project. So go ahead and pick your favorite Jira project and we're going to be just super hyper focused on just the priority field. This is very important because not all work is created equal and Jira gives you tools. It gives you fields that you can leverage as resources to help you as a Scrum Master make a better call in cooperation with your product owner, with other stakeholders that may have some influence as to what your team is supposed to be working on at what time. And so the priority field is just a, another tool, another leverage that you can have within Jira to help you determine the right thing that your team needs to be working on at the right time. Priorities are critical because like I mentioned a few seconds ago, not everything is created equal. Not everything is an immediate uh, problem. Not everything has the same sense of urgency. And the priority field in Jira is really going to help you tell that narrative. It's going to help you stay organized and help you categorize, bucketize your different work so that you can at a glance look at basically everything you got to work on and help you understand what's the most critical thing that my team needs to be working on. And so part of this video, I'm going to share a rubric, a guidance, if you will, as to how you should set up your priorities so that they're the most effective. But first, let's look at Jira and see what comes by default. So by default, one of the things here is every time that you go and create an actual issue in Jira, the priority is going to be set to medium. That is the default value. And this is actually something that can be changed. So if this doesn't work for you, I recommend you go in and talk to your Jira admin to get this changed. Now, full disclosure, any changes to priority within the world of Jira doesn't just affect your project. It's actually global. So everybody, any change, for example, if you wanted everything to be like a priority, and um, if you wanted to drop the priority to like low or lowest, everybody's issues when they're created in Jira would be dropped to that lower or lowest. So you want to make sure that whatever strategy you pick from a priority perspective, you're talking about it from a global level, not just what your team needs. So I want you to keep that in mind. Additionally, as another disclaimer, if you wanted to change these values, instead of it saying highest, high, medium, low, or lowest, if you wanted it to say something like critical, major, minor, things like that, again, the same rule applies. Any changes to the priority values doesn't just impact your project, but it's set at the global level. So everybody would be impacted by this change. So you want to be very careful. You want to over communicate any changes you do to the priority. But what I'm about to share with you right now should work regardless of whatever strategy you pick. Because at the end of the day, it's the meaning, it's the representation of these values and how you use them internally within your team that you're going to get the most value out of this. All right. So assuming we don't make any changes to anything, I want to start off with basically explaining how I provide value, how I give meaning, impact to these values in the priority field. So my highest is always my non-negotiable. This is something's going to explode, something's going to blow up, somebody's going to die type of situations, right? These are those, is it life or death? And you may be asking yourself, Alex, this is a little, little too intense. Like, what's the deal with this, right? And the, and the logic behind this is when I am planning my sprint and let's say I have a bug that I have to bring into my sprint and my team has to prioritize this work. It's very easy for people to cry wolf. It's very people, very easy for people to do chicken little, the sky is falling. Oh my gosh, you need to get this fixed, right? It's very, very easy for people to just default to that kind of behavior and just sense of paranoia, if you will, right? But when you present facts and data, when you say, Hey, here's a bug, here's ex here's the observed behavior. If it, it occurs, here's the proof that somebody's life is in danger, that something bad will happen with the system, something catastrophic, right? We're not talking about like, oh, 
a f function call is not going to work. But if the system like literally comes up in smoke, then we have a pretty big problem, right? And so at that point, whatever I have planned for my sprint, I want to prioritize that as the highest thing because there is literally life and death, right? So you want to reserve your highest for actual emergencies, for real like showstoppers, okay? You want to treat this with the utmost respect, right? Your highest should be your showstopper. Anything that is has a potential to be a showstopper, whether it's a feature, a bug, whatever, it must be treated appropriately. From there, we come to basic like the high. So for me, high or your second layer down, whatever you want to call your second layer, the high is going to be nobody's in danger. The system's not going to blow up, but significant degradation to the functionality, significant degradation to the overall system is going to happen. Okay. So for example, if we don't ship this feature and we're, we're creating a website to buy items, right? And the shopping cart is not developed. Well, guess what? Everything that is shopping cart related should be of a priority high because it's all going to the main functionality. Because if you ship this product as an MVP without the ability to do a shopping cart, nobody's going to buy anything, right? And so you want to leverage, again, this next layer where it's like, it's not the showstopper. It's not going to be the end of the world, right? But if it doesn't get fixed, we're going to have significant problems, right? And so that's where your high is going to come into play. And so now when you're looking back at your Jira issues, okay, so I'm going to deviate a little bit from where I was going, but now when you're looking at your things, right, if I am looking at a cranberry sauce versus mashed potatoes, my mashed potatoes might be more important, right? So this is a, this is a non-negotiable. This has to be in my Thanksgiving feast. Otherwise, I won't have a Thanksgiving feast. But the cranberry sauce, that one, that one might be negotiable, right? We might not need it. We may need it. Some people like it. Some people don't. And we can kind of compromise on it a little bit more. And so the priority might be the medium. But red wine, you know you got to have your red wine. So that might, might be a high as well. And so when you start doing these things, now you can start seeing that Jira is changing the value here. And now you can make sure that when you're planning your sprint, when your team is trying to figure out what should I work on next, they can use the priority field as guidance, as a little a little mentor that is there telling them, hey, pick me, pick me, because I am the next in the pecking order of what is important, what absolutely needs to get fixed. So again, this, this is the value you're getting when you use your priorities correctly. Also though, keep in mind that everybody in your organization, at least within your team, should have the same understanding of what these different values mean. Everybody should know that the highest is the showstoppers, those non-negotiables, life and death. Everybody should know that high is yet another non-negotiable. This is nobody's no life and death, no nobody's blowing up, but significant degradation, significant loss of capabilities, functionality, user experience if this high doesn't get um, put into the sprint. Then we got our mediums. Mediums usually involve some sort of a workaround. There, it just means we're coming down to the third layer. It means, yeah, we have a problem. Yeah, it's annoying. Nobody's gonna blow up. Nothing's, nothing's gonna break significantly. Functionality is most, mainly there. We just have a workaround. We just have to do things in a different, slightly different way. And then we have our low, which is going to be our fourth layer. And so our, our fourth layer on the low is going to be essentially Hey, do you know what? It's annoying. We don't have fruit punch, but maybe we have apple juice or we have orange juice. So we have something else, but it's just an annoyance, right? And so that's kind of the four levels that I typically use and how I guide my teams. But you want to be strategic with your priorities here because they can really help move things up and down so that when your team is looking at a sea of all the work that needs to be done, they don't have to get overwhelmed by it because they can just start sorting on their priorities and go, okay, so let's tactically start tackling these problems one by one, but in the logic order and the order that makes the most sense based on that priority. So I highly encourage you as a scrum master, if you're not leveraging the priority field, you're really missing out. You're missing out on, on a great communication vessel, not only for your team, but for your stakeholders as well, because your stakeholders can influence, your product owner can basically provide guidance and tell you, these are my non-negotiables, this is are gonna blow up. Your QA team can say, hey, I have a bug that I just observed. And uh, by the way, when I plug it in, smoke comes out of the system, you might wanna get that fixed. And again, you can help communicate that back to the developers, back to all your other stakeholders, 
by making it the priority of the highest. And so hopefully this helped you. I'm not sure if you're using priorities right now in Jira. If you are, if you're using them in a different way, let me know in the comment section, but this is the way I usually leverage my priority field. I wanted to share this with you just in case it opens your eyes to maybe a different way of being able to, again, triage and adjudicate all of the stuff, all the balls you got up in the air. This is a great way to maybe help you prioritize which ones absolutely have to stay up there and which ones can afford to fall to the ground a little bit. So anyways, if you haven't subscribed right now, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you watching this entire video. Really, really helps out with those watch hours. So thank you very much. Drop a like again, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.